Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, I introduced myself. For those who weren't there, my name is David. But this week, however, I wish to speak of a tongue spoken by an estimated 100 million people across the globe. A language that has changed the world as much as the world has changed it. It rose from tribal Germanic cultures to the modern society we see today. Ladies and gentlemen, today I speak of the English language. I will attempt to cover the four major stages of English, which are Old English, Middle English, and Early Modern English, and Modern English. Without further delay, I will commence. In the beginning, English was nothing more than one of many guttural tribal Germanic tongues known to modern historians as Old English, or Anglo-Saxon. It first appeared in 449 AD as a result of cultural infusion with the native British Celtics and the invading Anglo-Saxons. If heard today, Old English would be incomprehensible to modern English. Meaning, nice to meet you in Old English. Or is her any that English a sprig? Meaning, does anyone here speak English? <laughs> <laughs> As the years went by, Anglo-Saxon kings rose and fell. We gained a variety of new words from the Latin-speaking Roman Catholics who had sent missionaries to the island of Britain and the warmongering Danish Vikings who wished to take over Britain just like the Anglo-Saxons of old did. But the real evolution of English began in 1066 when the French-speaking William Duke of Normandy launched a massive invasion of the island of Britain known as the Norman Conquest. The conquest ended with William being crowned King of England. As King, William would enforce French as the language of state in England and Latin as the language of religion. English was pushed down to the language of peasants for nearly 300 years. It is said of all the languages to have an effect on English, French had the most extensive one. To this day, there was an estimated 10,000 words that originated from French. Words like castle, enemy, accuse, evidence, jury, judge, salmon, orange, mackerel, vinegar, cream, and dinner. <laughs> English made a slow crawl upward back to power until it finally regained it in 1399 AD when the French-speaking King Richard II was replaced by the English-speaking Henry, Duke of Lancaster. By that time, English had undergone a massive change, transforming it from Old English to Middle English, our second stage. Middle English would sound something like, uh, Mi friendas. The third pig on thy reed's name is Henry. It's starting to sound more familiar, isn't it? But the change doesn't stop there. Through the 14 to 1600s, we received pieces of literature and cultural enrichment such as the first English Bibles and Shakespeare. Shakespeare alone is said to have contributed 2,000 new words and phrases to the English language. Words like dawn, majestic, unreal, rant, and lonely. Phrases like all of a sudden, all's well that ends well, and eaten out of house and home. <laughs> English continued to expand. By the, around the 15 to 1600s, English had changed to our third stage, early modern English, which would sound something like, I think me got some grand thought before the tea raises. Uh, what did I just say? Anyway, moving <laughs> on a bit, 
the 17th and 18th centuries marked one of the last major stages of English. At this time, lexicons such as William Johnson and, William and Kent, Samuel Johnson and William Kent were attempting to bring order to the English language by creating the first English dictionaries and a national standard for English. You know, dictating how words are spelt and such. At the time also, the nation of England had become a world superpower, expanding its tentacles across the earth to places like India, where we got shampoo, cash, guru, karma, and jungle, to the Caribbean, where we got <coughs> hammock, canoe, hurricane, and barbecue, and Africa, where we learned about voodoo and zombies. <laughs> And let's not forget good old Australia, where we learned about kangaroos, wombats, koalas, and boomerangs. <laughs> However, the, one of the great changes in that age was probably the great vowel shift. An example of the great vowel shift is if I say, I want to buy a house, before the vowel shift I would say, I want the boy a house. So basically, it was an event that occurred from 17 to 1800s, and it changed the way we pronounce our vowels. Now, while the vowel shift may have been great, the the vowel shift may have been great, but through the 18 to 1970s, we had two world wars, and the internet was invented. From the world wars, we got terms such as bombardment, and from the internet, we got a whole new wave of changes like abbreviations like LOL, BTW, and UD2BKM, meaning you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> and now, English is modern. Time is short, so I will leave you with a quote from Derek Wilcott. The English language is nobody's special property. It is the property of imagination. It is the property of the language itself. <laughs> Congratulations, David. David stood up, spoke up, and shut up. And that's my <clears throat> formula for success for speaking. And he certainly fulfilled that. He gave us a tremendous an interesting and informative lesson in historical use of our language. Some examples of how it's used and by contrast, how many of us frequently misuse it but we still get by. So congratulations, David. I have little to offer in the way of suggestive suggestions for improvement. You, you may well have came out from behind the lectern a little more and showed us some emotion and action, but otherwise, I found it an extremely well-delivered speech, and I give you my congratulations. Right.